Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground this week. I'm Dave Stevens, your host, and we're going to go over some stuff that's going to scare you out of your mind, as usual. But first, let's introduce my guest, uh, guest co-host, Tom Moore, adjunct faculty at Kappa Ulani Community College. Hello, Tom. Thanks, Thanks so much for having coming me. back. I know you you kick your own butt to do research on these topics, and today we got kind of caught by surprise. The last couple of days, the Russians have invaded. They just got caught invading. Hey, that's a good yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's not like Red Dawn. People think ah, the Russians attacked, and there's parachutes in the sky, and they've taken over, and uh, that's not true. They they kind of crawled in like rats without us knowing the rats are in the walls. And uh, now we're noticing them in great volume in uh, the nuclear plants, power plants, water treatment plants and water facilities, uh, and water direction facilities and plump pumping stations and uh, other energy sector uh, industries. And it's, it's, it's strange that we just now awoke, but I think this administration has known about this for quite some time. Well, you know, we're the white hats, and then there's the black hats, and there are gray hats someplace. But uh, I, I'm, my guess is that we've more or less known about this kind of thing for a long time, because this kind of thing has been going on for a long time. Partially, we know that partially because we've been doing it. Mm. You know, it's, they're, they're not the only people in the biz. You what? Know, they, no, seriously. We do this? Yes, and the Israelis do it, and what? lots of other people. No. All, all the countries that start with C are doing it or wish, wish they could. We know. don't do this. Yeah, and so somebody <laughs> in the, in the selfie business decided, maybe we should let the public in on this, let the geeks know that this <laughs> is happening, because it's, it reached some sort of trippy, tipping point, some sort of critical mass. But this is not brand new news. Yeah. It's just this week's burp. Well, uh, let me go to camera three for a second right here. And I, I'd just like to uh, shout out to our president of the United States, President Trump. We would not be talking about this right now if you were not such an absolute moron and could do your job even as, as well as your daughter could do your job. Please step aside and let someone qualified be president because you, sir, have colluded with the Russians, taken their money, now you're playing with fire, and you're going to kill the rest of us. So get out. Okay, back to the show. Yes, meanwhile. Okay. Meanwhile, back on the front. <laughs> this is why we're talking about Russia, because uh, Russia's been a problem since they, we think they, they hassled with our elections, they messed with them, and um, maybe not pushed Trump into office, but certainly they, they disrupted the process, and they made us uh, not have faith in our elections. And if, if indeed they did mess with the elections, that tells me that my vote no longer matters. It's all up to some computer or some nation state that has the resources to direct what my vote is going to be. I don't know. I have a vote anymore. I can't, can't put the people in office that I want. And that's a huge problem. But now, since then, our president, Mr. Idiot Trump, has ignored the problem. And now we're having to talk about it now on the show because now we're seeing all this malware that Russia's implanted secretly on our energy sector services that's trying to phone home. Now let's, let's go over some of the, the command and control uh, of these, these viruses. So malware, what, the, what they do is they, they get you to click on an email. Let's go over phishing first. This is usually how it comes in because we have great network defenses. Our firewalls are up and uh, the best way to get around all the security is to get some unsuspecting person like our idiot President Trump to click on an, a link uh, and that activates a virus and implants some software, and it doesn't actually do anything wrong at that time. It just sits there, lays in wait, and phones home. It, well, it does something wrong. It just doesn't, it's just not obvious that it's wrong. It's not obvious. It's not going to yeah. change your screen or no, turn stuff no, up upside no, down, no. right? Right. It's not going to turn on Fox News. That's the only station our idiot president listens to. Uh, it's not going to do that. What it will do is it'll sit and wait for a connection to a server on the internet somewhere that's controlled by a, a, a bad player, like Russia. This is a bad actor. And uh, they call these command and control servers. 
Sure. So they will sit there and wait for a message from an implant a piece of software so they can do things like exfil data or take control of the network or a piece of equipment on the network. Now what makes this incredibly challenging this time is that this has to do with two things I don't think anybody's really been looking for in um, the outside of the DOD. So this deals with smaller vendors that supply the DOD with products and it also deals with energy sector services that have something called industrial control systems. Uh, system control and data acquisitions, data controls, uh, right. PLCs, primary logic circuits. Uh, these are things that control stepper motors, water valves, uh, heat and temperature sensors, and all the things that make these hydraulics and motors and functioning pieces work in an industrial facility, like a nuclear power plant. Exactly. Like uh, a, an electric grid. And these are the, the things. Now, we try to protect these by putting in an air gap. You want to tell us what an air gap is? Um, well, this is not an air gap, and this is. That's a great demonstration. <laughs> so the, the network that controls the device should be physically separate from the network that's connected to the internet. So what but, could possibly go wrong? Yeah, so you need to update those systems every once in a while, and usually someone walks in a flash drive. That they found on the parking lot. Ooh, oh, this one, this one looks. This one looks interesting. <laughs> it says 32 gigs, and oh, it was free. Oh, yes. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> and it says I won a prize. Yes, uh, and we won't stick it into a computer that it might mess up. We'll just stick it into this turbine. You know, it's it's even um, it, it's even when you think you're safe and you have a flash drive that you know is is good. No, um, like an unloaded gun. Yeah, you know, you know it's not loaded. Right. Uh, so you stick that flash drive into the computer system on the internet, and you download the updates for that control system, that piece of SCADA hardware, that human uh, machine interface device. You download that update, and then you unplug it and walk it physically into the control room of the industrial control systems. That's called sneaker net, right? Of course. And you plug it in to do the it's, updates. By the way, it's, it's based on footwear. Sne yeah, the sneakers, sneakers to, to which it is being alluded are footwear. <laughs> some, <laughs> some of the people might not know. Thank you. That, that, that kind of jargon. See, you geeks take it all for granted that people know this technical jargon. Thank you. Sneakers, yes. Well, that's why we have two of us. Sneaker net. Um, you walk it in, and you put it in the industrial control system, and you run the update. Problem is, when you were getting the update on your other network, that computer system you were plugged into is mo most likely compromised. That's what we're finding out At least now. possibly compromised. It's m more than likely now, if you're in the en energy, energy sector, you're, you've been compromised. So you've just walked in a, a virus, another piece of malware, into your industrial control systems. Now, this is how Stuxnet worked. Ooh, I remember that. Stuxnet took down um, a, an Iranian uh, nuclear plant by putting in a command to make the stepper motors, the things that turn the turbines, go, go too fast. Go too fast and then... Smells expensive. Yeah. So some and, of this we talked about last week. And they melted. So now we're at the point where this could happen to us. So that malware is probably sitting on our industrial control systems waiting for some kind of a command. And it could be anything from another update or uh, a certain... Uh, increase of speed or switch to another network or some kind of change. It's waiting for a command so it can activate and destroy something. Or phone home. If, it, if it's not air-gapped, it can phone home. Of course. So uh, this, this could be as simple as an EMP blast at a certain frequency and it recognizes it and trips the software into a certain state. Um, EMP, electromagnetic pulse. pulse, just so our audience knows. Yes. I, I'm trying to keep up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm I, a geek, but I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but many of them are geeks too. So, so this this is one of the problems. And the other thing is, um, these aren't Department of Defense. This is not U.S. government. What we're finding out is this malware is on supply chain. So, I'm a small vendor. I might supply electricity to uh, a, another vendor or a base or a DoD uh, facility. And uh, I have been compromised. And, and pray tell, little guy, small vendor, how did you get selected? Lowest bidder. Always the lowest bidder, I'm afraid. Oh. And I'm sorry, it's a very complicated process if you go through bidding out a contract. And then you got to know somebody, because that's also the way it goes. Yes. Uh, you got a low price, and you got to know somebody, usually uh, with four stars on their sleeve. And uh, then that person goes to work for Trump. But only for a little while. <laughs> or, or, or possibly the, the local Haima office. But um, 
<laughs> so you get, you get the contract, you supply the DOD with something, and your connection to them is what the bad actors want. Because now, say you have uh, some kind of way to get into the DOD networks to report some, some data every month, you have a secure connection. So if somebody compromises your network, they can get into the DOD's network over your secure connection, which is not setting off any alarms. No one's looking for it. No one is looking for them. So you can access that way. In addition, if I supply electricity to that base, well, the base has probably got some backup generators, right? But they only work for a little while. So if I shut off the electricity and just wait, eventually that base is not going to have any power. It's going to be... It's going to make it harder for them to do things. Yeah, not impossible, but more difficult. And, uh, you know, certain services are better with difficulties than others, as we know. That's correct. Uh, some, some services hardly ever have electricity at all. <laughs> so they're pretty good with that. But this could, this could damage, you know, the security of the nation. Um, and if you take the power down, we don't have... Uh, we don't have the capacity to serve people. We have very integrated systems now that depend on very close tolerances. You know, if you had an old beater 43 Jeep, you know, you could essentially run it through water and just, just leave it in the driveway and it would start up or you could get it running again. But if you have a Lamborghini, you know, 12 cylinder, you fly in the, um, the mechanic from Italy to work on it, yeah, those tolerances are much closer. It's a, it's a lot pickier. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we used to have warehouses in our supply chains you alluded to. No, we don't have warehouses now. We have just-in-time manufacturing. Yeah, JIT, just-in-time. That's right. There you right. go. Everything, the tolerances on everything are much closer, and so now when things go wrong, it's a much bigger problem. It can slow things down to grind us to a halt Absolutely. in no time we're, we're at all. Way, as we get more and more sophisticated and more and more fine-tuned, we become more and more vulnerable. So now what the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, and the FBI have said, uh, their direct, direct quote, I mind you, this, this says, uh, they said that Russia now has their finger on the button and can shut us down. Let's just ponder that thought for a moment, shall uh, we? Been there, done that. That's mutually assured destruction. I don't think we have the finger, our finger on their button. Well, you're not supposed to think that. <laughs> but I'm counting on it. I, well, mutually assured is still destruction. B yeah. That doesn't make me feel good. There's no warm fuzzy here. Uh, it's better than not mutually uh, assured destruction. I don't know. I'm still dead. Well, you're inconvenienced in the case of, uh, <laughs> in, in the case of a power outage or um, a utility failure. Now, here's one of the big things, though. Water. The easiest way to destroy any kind of civilization, take away the water. Or just put a few drops of something naughty in it. Now, that would be terrible, like poisoning water. I, I don't know about that. Uh, of course, why would it isn't beyond poisoning. I think we've found that out this week also. Yeah. With the poisoning of uh, several people in London that Russia said, no, we have nothing to do with this. <laughs> yes. And because they denied it, it must be true because they denied it on the Internet. That's right. Yes. Uh, do, don't they have a Twitter account? Uh, probably. Because our president does. Yes. Dumbest president ever in the history of the United States has a Twitter account, and they won't take it away from him. That's the responsibility of all the people walking around with Trump in his orbit that don't understand that you're letting him destroy the planet. Thank you so much. Back to our show. Back to our show. <laughs> yes. And not work from our sponsor. Not that I have an opinion on anything. No, no. Completely <laughs> objective on this point. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a complicated matter. Uh, people are not aware how vulnerable we are as yeah. a nation, as a community. Uh, you know, we think it's just that these threats are, are individualized. We think that they apply to you know, Amazon or, or where we buy our goodies and gadgets from, but it's much more systemic at this juncture, and, and we have less and less tolerance for it. I, I discussed the intolerance we have just in terms of the integration uh, and fine-tuning of our systems, but personality-wise, just, you know, we aren't our grandparents or our grandparents' parents anymore. Let's talk about personality when we come back from the break. Until then, Mr. Trump, if you're watching, please come back and we're going to demonstrate how the uh, companies and, and organizations that you don't control are compensating for your incompetence 
and, uh, and how we're going to overcome this obstacle that you won't do anything about. So we'll be right back. Until then, stay safe. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Elm, host of Likeable Science on ThinkTech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Welcome back, and Mr. Trump, if you're watching, welcome back, sir, and we're now going to go into the part of the show where we tell you how we're going to compensate for you not doing your job and letting this country be in danger uh, from a cyber attack, which you've been ignoring because you think it affects the legitimacy of your presidency, but we have news for you, sir. The elections have nothing to do with your legitimacy. You're a moron that took away your legitimacy, just so you know. Those are the facts. Ask anybody around you, they're not gonna tell you. You need to watch somebody like me or Mr. Colbert on CBS every night, which I love. He just tears you apart, Mr. Trump. You're a complete dead. Now let's get back to our show. We're having a tech moment now. Tom, you're gonna to share something about artificial intelligence with us. Yeah, it just was announced by Microsoft on this uh, past Wednesday that they announced with regard to Chinese to English translation, they've come up with a technology, a service, a facility mechanism device that can actually translate from Chinese to English, this is written Chinese, as well as, they're not claiming better than, but as well as an individual can. And some people are going, well, hey, my Siri can do that. Hey, well, what the heck, Google Translate can do that. No, no, this is at a slightly different level. This is at the professional level. This is at good enough for court. And it's a very big deal, not only because it's very practical and that's a great big market that we may want to do business with, uh, either as individuals or companies or, or governments, but what it portends is uh, capabilities, machine capabilities, that are accelerating faster than the experts had anticipated them to accelerate. Kind of blows away Moore's law. Uh, yes. Moore's law was, was generally, you're supposed to double speed and storage capacity uh, at, and processing. At, at half the price. Yeah, as every couple of years, right. right? Every 18 months, I think it was. Yeah. And now we've just completely annihilated that. Exactly. We're on this asymptotic launch path that just takes us, that's a really steep curve, by that's, the way, asymptotic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of define. Steeper at a steeper rate. This is amazing to me because um, when, I, when I did some projects in China, uh, I learned that uh, because, you know, Western culture, they teach us nothing of Eastern culture when we're in school, especially public school, which I went to. So when I got to China, I actually learned some things about the, the people in the East, and it was really fascinating that there's traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese out there, and uh, if you use the Chinese characters, uh, the symbols, uh, the traditional, you could have, I think there's 20,000 of these characters, because you can go into minutia of, of you know emotions and feelings and color, and uh, it just it's really granular level signs. And uh, you know, poets will use these, scholars will use these, but most people use the simplified Chinese characters. So if you can translate traditional Chinese into English, that's amazing. Because I don't think the English language has the capacity to go into that kind of a granular description of something as traditional Chinese. And of course, we've, we've only had English for what, 350 years, I think. But traditional Chinese, I believe, is a little older. I, I think so. Just, uh, just my guess, it might be just a smidge older than that. Chopsticks uh, are older than forks. <laughs> uh, just, hey, take it, take it, and leave it. Yeah. yeah, I think, I think they were around when, uh, when we colonized the U.S. Yeah, yeah, I think so. so. Yeah, I, I'm not positive. Not necessarily. Somebody in the call US, in and tell us. Let's put the number on the screen. It's eight zero eight three seven four two zero one four. And if you can tell me, uh, you know, how old the Chinese culture is, I think it's about. 6,000 years? Yeah. Or you could call and tell us that you have chopsticks. That would be the other thing. <laughs> Good enough. Sure. 
this is amazing stuff. The, the, the translation, uh, you know, Google Translate's been out for about five years, I think. And it's pretty cool. And it's pretty darn good. Yeah. Uh, and I know because I've had to use it uh, when I lived in California, of course, the Spanish was pr pretty much my first language. And then I came out here and nobody spoke. Yes. So now I've forgotten most of it. And thank God Google Translate. Is this like the men's room? Oh, good. It's over <laughs> here. I'm so glad we figured this out. What's your favorite line? Donde esta la biblioteca? In la playa? In la biblioteca? I can't remember any of my Chinese. Something like, I'd answer the phone. Why? You know, that, that's about it. That's all Oh, OK. Thank you. That, you know I... more. That's very good. Yeah. Is that Mandarin or Cantonese? Probably one or the other. So I, I would guess Mandarin. Would that, guess that's Mandarin. the formal, yeah. pleasant to listen to. Yeah, at a 50-50 chance. <laughs> I, I, I will take those guesses more often than not. <laughs> Flip a coin. Yeah. I got one of them. Yeah, <laughs> get chance. OK, let's roll back into what we were talking about. Um, there are uh, organizations in the United States, um, both at the federal level and state level, that send out bulletins to people who sign up for them in the cyber sphere like us. Oh, like and CERT? CERT. So the United States Computer Emergency Readiness Team, or US CERT, sends out bulletins, and we get these every day. Check out my acronym. Yeah, yeah just, just, just double check it. <laughs> yep, yep, that's it, that's it, that's it. C-E-R-T. Yes, yeah, for, okay, those, right. for those taking notes at home. Yeah, just wanted to give them a chance to catch up. <laughs> right, and R stands for readiness, not response. I mix that up all the time. But it's an organization that sends you out warnings all the time. And they don't just say, hey, there's a virus, hey, there's some malware. They say it's a virus, it's malware, it's, it's a phishing attack, and this is what it affects. Yeah. It gets and, you operating and here's systems. what you might be able to do about it. And here's what yeah. you can do about it. And the shocking thing is they put out industrial control systems and electronics all the time. In yeah. fact, it, the ratio is about five to one that I've seen electronics to software. So software isn't the biggest attack vector anymore. The electronics are because engineers are just designing stuff to work well. That's right. Right? That's They want it to resist the weather and uh, lots of cycles, but they're not thinking about security. You know, It's very rare that they think about security. Why should they? The accountants aren't making them think about security. So bean countering things. So uh, the, the US CERT sent out a bulletin about this Russian hacking about a day after we started monitoring it. This is on the 15th, this is yesterday. And they sent out a spreadsheet, which was great. The spreadsheet had uh, IP addresses, um, the actual numerical addresses of machines on the internet, and website names, domain names, the actual names like www.imabadguy.com or whatever that is. And they have a list of these things that you can tell your firewall, do not allow traffic outside of your network, in or out, to these servers. These are command and control bad actors. Don't do this. It also included, and I like this, MD5 hashes of the malware that you can use to scan your systems currently. So let's review what a hash is. That hash is um, a mathematical algorithm. You send some data into it, and it comes out the other side as a specific number of bytes. MD5 would have 16 bytes. And it's just a hexadecimal representation of whatever data went into it. Now, if I change even so much as one bit of the data that I'm putting into this MD5 algorithm, I'm going to get a different output. That's right. So that MD5 hash represents the exact signature of the bad malware that they know it could be on your system. So if you put all these signatures, these MD5 hashes, into your scanner, your uh, IPS or IDS, then you could scan your system, and if one of those uh, pieces of software has the same MD5 hash, that's a bad player. You need to get it off your network immediately. And, and if they were static, that would be just peachy keen wonderful. But unfortunately, it grows and grows and grows. We'll get a new list tomorrow, I hope. Uh, US CERT out there, you're doing a fantastic job. I love you. You're one of the best organizations out there working for us, the American citizens trying to defend this nation, and you're definitely not uh, the idiot, uh, Mr. Trump, who's imitating the president currently and who is the uh, dumbest guy. I've, you are so dumb, Mr. President, and I can't even find an equivalent for you. Uh, back to the show. Yes, me yeah. <laughs> So we listen to U.S. CERT. There's also InfraGuard. Have you signed up for InfraGuard yet? No, I'm, I haven't. You should do so. You, uh, haven't, you haven't told me about it. So InfraGuard is an association of civilian uh, players and, uh, and organizations in conjunction with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So when you sign up, they make you give them your social security number. <gasps> it's a little disconcerting. I got to tell you, I was a little bit 
taken aback. Could I give them your social security number you instead? You could. They're, they're probably going to say, um, are you sure you're Tom? Because you're coming up as Dave in our system, and you don't look the same. I see. Like, your hair is different. I didn't know the IRS had my um, had my my picture, but oh well. The IRS? No, yeah. this is InfraGuard. Yeah. This is the FBI. But, Remember the '60s? Yeah. They have your picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's. <laughs> We all know what the government does. We all know how they treat us. We all know the records they keep on every single one of us. I know because all my information is currently on the dark web thanks to the Office of Professional Management, OPM, getting hacked after I applied for security clearance. Again, thank you, President Trump, for not defending our country, you big moron. Back to the show. Yes. <laughs> I love how you've avoided those technical experts so up to now. Up to now. Up say. to now. Yeah. I've been trying to be kind, but I just can't stand wow, seeing the country that I wore a uniform to defend yes. being taken advantage of by a, a foreign actor. This is Russia now. Um, China does this too to us all the time, and North Korea attacks us too. Um, but we have a president who is the commander in chief of the United States Armed Services, and he is absolutely sitting on his thumbs. Both of them at the same time somewhere actuated. Yes. Yes. And uh, again, Mr. Trump, thank you so much for being such an idiot. And get out the stool and let somebody else do the job, please. Thank you. Back to the show. Yes. Tom, thank you for being my, my co-host and tolerating my behavior today. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about what we can do to protect ourselves uh, as just regular old civilians in this day and age. We used to take uh, care to create in the islands a hurricane kit, right? Food, water. Like, do you think now we have to create uh, an anti-Trump mistake kit? I was thinking we could live by rivers. <laughs> really by rivers? Yes. And it's like so we have a water supply and an escape route. No, well, and and hydroelectric power. <laughs> but, oh yeah, yeah. If we just all lived by rivers and make sure that no one's upstream of us, I think that would <laughs> without be, a toilet. Yeah, with that. Yes. <laughs> that would pretty much. That's how we could take care of ourselves. I mean, there's just, to a certain extent we can we can operate somewhat more independently uh, than most of us are prepared to. Uh, we can get a sun oven. We have a sun oven. We have two sun ovens. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how prepared we are. No, you have sun. I live on an island where there's no sun. Uh, well, my side is we just have rain. Yeah, which is great because we always have water. Let's per share. Perhaps we could live together. <laughs> <laughs> With our last thirty seconds, what do you think we should? Uh, what's the most important thing we should learn from today? Uh, don't take your blessings for granted. It's that's true. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. You, you know, all assumptions are false. This is especially true of obvious assumptions. That doesn't mean go out and start your citizenship uh, or immigration papers with like New Zealand. It just means Finland. Um, I'm sorry. Finland is actually winning. Oh, they're, they're, they're the, the happiest. Happy, they're right, the happiest right, right, right. capital. It's, but it's really freaking cold there. I don't think we would like it there much. It is. Yeah. It is. But they they have that saying. Uh, There's no bad weather, just bad clothing. Uh, pff, which I, is uh, I don't believe that. Yeah, I'd, I'd never heard of that saying. It's a lucky <laughs> thing. Um, well, thanks for being on the show today. We got to wrap it up. We're out of time. This is a great show. We got to do this again. Um, I, I like this idea. Let's just keep cutting up Trump and, and giving people warnings about cybersecurity. Are you with me? Well, we call the 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 world for interesting news. Is that a yes? Uh, yes. Okay. I'll do it again. I'll do it at least one more time. Join us next week, everybody, when we'll be back with more <laughs> informative news and opinions about our current administration, which completely sucks. Until then, stay safe.